this is everything you need to know about OneLake in Microsoft Fabric. In May 2023, Microsoft unveiled their vision for the future of data analytics, and that vision was Microsoft Fabric. And right at the core of Fabric is OneLake, a one-size-fits-all data lake as a service that will store all of your organization's data. And OneLake is one of the most important and innovative parts of Fabric, so I think it's worthwhile getting to know exactly how it works and what we can do with it. But before that, let's begin by looking at the problem that OneLake solves. Over the past decade, Microsoft has been busy building dozens of data products to store, transform, analyze, and visualize your data anyhow you want. Fast forward to 2023, and what we see in a typical organization is data scattered right across different teams, all managing different data products in their own departmental silos. But frequently teams need to access data from other departments as well. So what they do is they set up data pipelines to copy data from one location to the other. So you've got ADF pipelines running constantly, grabbing data from here, copying it to there, data from here, copying it to there. Now this gets the job done in the short term, but in the long term, your organization is left with a complete mess with multiple copies of every data set scattered right throughout your organization. So a few years ago, the top dogs at Microsoft obviously saw how chaotic things were coming for the average organization and thought, we need a better solution for this. So they got some of the clever people in their organization to get around a table or a team's call to thrash out the future vision for managing data in an organization. And these are some of the principles for the future of data, that vision that they came out with at that meeting. There needs to be a shift from multiple data silos in an organization to one data lake for storage and managing all data within that organization. There needs to be a move away from having multiple proprietary storage formats. Let's just have one open source storage format to make interoperability effortless. There's also a need to make data governance a lot more simple and bake it into the storage layer so there's no extra effort to set it up. There's also a need to get away from the copy data pattern and instead data should stay where it is and intelligent links should be made when you need to access that data. So now we fast forward to today, and Microsoft has very recently released Microsoft Fabric, and OneLake is obviously a core part of that. So let's have a look at how OneLake provides a solution to these challenges. We're gonna start with some basic concepts around OneLake. So here we have a Fabric tenant, and every Fabric tenant has one OneLake set up and ready to go. There's no setup, you don't have to do anything. Now there's only ever one OneLake for each tenant, so two lake is not a thing. And if every company has just one one lake, we need something to organize things, otherwise things will just get a complete mess. And for this, we have workspaces, a concept obviously borrowed from Power BI. Another thing to bear in mind about the workspace is it's the primary security boundary for data within one lake. So it allows multiple teams to collaborate securely on a data set or a data project. And obviously in our workspaces, we can create fabric items like a data warehouse, a lake house, a KQL database. And one of the key innovations in OneLake is that all tabular data, whether that be in a lake house or a data warehouse or a KQL database, under the hood, everything is stored in one format. And that format is Delta Lake. Why is that so powerful? Well, it means that for any of our experiences in Fabric, they all use the same underlying data. And if you're not familiar with all of these experiences, then you should watch this video here in which I explain them in detail. But how does this work on a practical level? Well, in Fabric, we have four main compute engines that all read and write Delta Lake format from one lake. We have the T-SQL engine that allows users to write T-SQL to read and transform tables. We've got the Spark engine, and the Spark engine is used in the Synapse data engineering and the data science notebooks and users can write PySpark, Spark R, Spark SQL, and Scala. And again, under the hood, Spark is reading and writing the Delta Lake format. The analysis service format is what is used in the Power BI experience and is used for the direct lake functionality too. So reading lake house tables directly into a Power BI report. And the KQL engine that sits between Synapse real-time analytics and the one lake. So the true benefit of this interoperability is that people can interact with data in your one lake however they are comfortable. 
data teams are diverse. Different people have different backgrounds, different preferences for how they want to interact with the data. For example, a Power BI developer might know Power Query, so he might want to use Data Factory experience for their transformations. A data analyst might be comfortable exploring data through T-SQL, so they'll be using the T-SQL engine. A data engineer might want to use Python, PySpark, or Scala to transform large data sets in their notebooks. A data scientist might want to write an ML model in PySpark, and the business user can read all of this data through a Power BI dashboard. All of these different personas are interacting with the same underlying data sets. Under the hood, one lake is like Azure Data Lake Storage. And I say like, there is not yet 100% feature parity between one lake and Azure Data Lake Storage, but you can certainly interact with a one lake like you would an Azure Data Lake Service Gen 2. This means we can read and write to our one lake using the ABFS path from tools like Databricks. In a lake house, you can right click on properties in a table and grab the ABFS path, and then in your Databricks notebook, write some code like this to write the data back into your one lake. This means as a company, if you've already invested significant amounts of money building complex routines in Databricks, then you don't have to move all of your, that processing into Fabric. You can simply write the results into your one lake for further processing or visualization in Power BI. Now, up until this point, I've mostly been talking about tabular data in one lake. Whereas in this example, we're actually talking about CSV data. It's not just tabular structured data in one lake, but also unstructured data like CSVs, images for computer vision, text files for NLP, anything really. You can upload files to the web portal using right click on the files icon and upload. And you can select any files you want. But this is actually quite a slow way of doing it. And if you want to be doing really big data sets and uploading big data sets, then it's probably better to be using something like Azure Storage Explorer, which is optimized for that task. Another option you've got for getting data into OneLake is to use the OneLake Windows client. You can download this, I'll put the link in the description below. And it's basically exactly like OneDrive. You can install the client, and then in your file explorer, you get this really nice shortcut or tab to your one lake and you can just use it like you, you would a file explorer you can upload files in there upload anything and it matches the structure of your one lake so it should look very familiar already now one drawback to this is that i think there are some limitations on the size of the data so if you've got really big data you might want to think about doing it in azure storage explorer to connect to your one lake from Azure Storage Explorer, simply click on a new connection, select ADLS Gen 2, choose your authentication method, and now we're gonna be wanting inputting the HTTPS URL, and you can find this within OneLake, that's the URL that you want there, just copy that and put it in this box here. Make sure you don't have table or any trailing uh, slashes, and that's how you set that up there. And then again, once you're in, it looks very familiar. It looks exactly like the OneLake File Explorer. You've got folders. It looks a lot like blob storage if you're used to using Storage Explorer for that. And this is a lot better option if you've got really big data. Now make sure you download the latest version of Azure Storage Explorer. I tried this with an older version, uh, but it didn't work. So make sure you've downloaded the latest version before you do this. Now I want to talk about another really cool feature of OneLake. And you'll remember this messy representation of how companies are copying data around different locations in their organizations to create multiple sources of truth. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is shortcuts. A shortcut is a virtual link to another data set in your organization. And that's, this can be other tables in OneLake, or even external data sets in Azure Data Lake Storage, or even other clouds completely, like Amazon S3. Let's look at an example. Here we have two tables, which might look like tables, but actually they're shortcuts. You can tell from the paperclip type link thing in the top left-hand corner of the icon. The first one, the company's table, is actually in a completely different data warehouse in Fabric. We've created a shortcut to that data so that we can now use it in this context. But the data always remains in the source location. Our second table here, the diabetes table, is a Delta Lake table that's currently stored in ADLS. 
The data stays there, but again, we can use it within the context of our lake house, and we can write notebooks using this data, for example. If the source data changes, then our linked data will also change. The second example is what's known as an external shortcut. And currently you can link to data in, like I say, ADLS, Amazon S3, and there's other shortcuts on the way in the roadmap. Like I can imagine GCP, Google Cloud Platform is probably one of them. Now this looks like a relatively simple feature, but it's actually mind blowing how this is even possible. I don't really understand how this is possible. There must have been a lot of behind the scenes engineering to make this work. But the possibilities it gives us are huge, really, when you think about it. Finally, I want to talk about the data governance challenge. In our messy status quo architecture that we've seen too many times already before, there's so much data scattered around every corner of an organization that data governance becomes almost impossible. Things like discoverability, access, security, and lineage were until recently a pipe dream in most organizations. Yes, Microsoft introduced Purview to begin to tackle some of these challenges in finding and cataloging and classifying your data, but wouldn't it be nicer if everything was just in the same place? Well, as we know, in Fabric, all of your data and your Fabric items are created and stored in one lake. As such, data governance becomes a much easier task. We have the one lake hub for discovering data that you have access to really easily. We get data lineage out of the box. And we can use that data lineage to do impact analysis of any changes we might want to make to any of these data sets. On top of these basic data governance features, Microsoft Purview Hub is also now a fully integrated part of Fabric. You can use it to assess and set levels of information protection, data loss prevention, audit your data estate within one lake, and much, much more. Having all of these features baked into Fabric and OneLake means that many more organizations will take data governance more seriously and get the benefits out of it. And that concludes this video on OneLake in Microsoft Fabric. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like this video and subscribe because there's plenty more videos just like this one in the pipeline. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.